respect of the National Housing Corporation, serious issues have been placed in the public domain by the former chairman. Rather than having these matters addressed, the normally talkative minister has not opened his mouth to utter a single word, not even in a debate of housing in Parliament last week. It was the first time that I've ever seen a housing debate in Parliament with a minister of housing present and is not participating in it. Instead, an unnamed source has sought to change the debate by attacking the former chairman of the National Housing Corporation personally on decisions taken months ago. And my deputy, Dale Marshall, has already spoken to that issue two days ago and raised the conflicts of interest that really occurred in the issuance of the insurance contracts awards at statutory corporations. And he is here this morning to repeat those concerns. The vilification of persons who have a different opinion or who express a different view in this country must stop. Only yesterday, Ambassador Kelman was taken to task, a former businessman of this country, for expressing a different view on the economy of this country. It has become part of the DNA of this government. The Minister of Housing has a duty to answer the serious charges laid against him by the former chairman of the National Housing Corporation, who he appointed in December of 2008. Contempt is being displayed for the public and the public's right to be given the full facts surrounding the minister's role and the issuing of contracts by the National Housing Corporation. And all of this is against the background of promises by this government for full transparency and accountability, and indeed a resolution prior to their becoming the government for the passage of freedom of information legislation. I have submitted a private member's resolution to ask the House of Assembly to refer these matters pertaining to the award of contracts at the National Housing Corporation between December 2008 and July 31st, 2010 to the Public Accounts Committee pursuant to Section 7E of the Public Accounts Committee Act in the interest of achieving full transparency and accountability. Questions have to be answered and we need to get the facts. What are the arrangements with the Jada Group and the National Housing Corporation at Conley and Country Road? Who carries the risk if these thousand zero lot buying houses are not sold? Did the National Housing Corporation sell the land to Jada at Coverley, the Jada Group at Coverley, for $3 per square foot when boasting that they are intending to sell land to poor and low income Barbadians at $5 per square foot? Did any of the Jada Group of companies pay for and apply for the planning permission for the units to be constructed at Coverley? Have there been discussions with the Jada Group in respect of the more than 1,000 houses to be built at Bushy Park? Why is there no contract in place with Clico for the housing projects of, with the National Housing Corporation at Constance in George? There are more questions than answers. Let us get the facts and refer it to the Public Accounts Committee. Barbadians are being made the victim of this absolute lack of leadership from these ministers and from the acting Prime Minister. People are now asking, who is in charge of these ministries? Not only who is in charge of the Ministry of Finance. The country accepts that Prime Minister Thompson is unwell and is seeking to recuperate overseas. But they expect that the cabinet will step up to the crease in his absence. It is time for the acting Prime Minister, Frendel Stewart, to face the Barbadian public and to provide leadership on these issues and more that are threatening to unfold, like the Sanitation Service Authority. And to do so, as he was given the authority by the substantive Prime Minister to do so for these two months. Mr. Stewart, I say to you, give the country the assurance, the calm assurance, that there is a government in place. And indeed, that it is in charge of the affairs of this country, particularly at this discomforting time with the medical crisis that has unfolded at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Are there any questions? There, sorry. Any questions?
record. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I want you to edit and change because I may try to turn on real beat. Okay. Carry the full statement. Okay. That's it. Thank you. What about for the cells? Sorry, mm -hmm. No, I, I, no, I think you should not be busy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I still want Um, <coughs> we continue to await the Prime Minister bring his silence on the especially grave situation in relation to national cooperation. It is a common sense thing that if a corporation is the owner of real estate that is to be developed, as a matter of law and good practice, that agency has to make decisions as a board on what is happening with this property. Um, there is no sense in which the normal operation of a board in terms of considering what is happening with its portfolio of, of land can be circumvented by any minister. I have had the good fortune of serving both as a chairman of statutory corporations, including national housing, and also as a cabinet minister. And in fact, um, I do not know how it could be continents that a board would be circumvented in the way in which Brian Hurricks Boyd has spoken. Um, it is a travesty and it flies in the face of a manifesto commitment of the Democratic Labour Party. That commitment was that there would be transparency, there would be good governance, they would follow the rule of law. All of these are, are precepts that they have built to the Barbadian public in the last election that they intended to follow. Um, what we now have is a situation where a board of directors who are responsible as a matter of law for the activity and the decisions of the board, uh, of the corporation, but yet still they have been circumvented by the minister. Um, in relation to what followed, it is really regrettable that individuals could try to distract or divert the public's attention from the real issue at the National Open Corporation um, by bringing the matter of Marilyn Rice Boeing into the public. Um, as a lawyer, all that Ms. Rice Boeing had to do, and based on her own statement, was to declare a conflict of interest and not participate in any way in the discussion. Uh, there's no indication. She said that that was the way in which she operated, and there's been no refuting of that particular uh, statement. But what is good for the means must also be good for the persons. Uh, you cannot criticize the moving of NHC's insurance portfolio from ICB to another agency, while not criticizing the movement of CBC's portfolio um, from its existing company to a uh, no moribund insurance company named Clico. Um, in circumstances where the chairman of CBC has a direct fiduciary interest in the insurance company to which it was moved. Um, it, it is clear to us that it is just an effort to deflect attention um, away from the true issue of the National Housing Corporation, and that is how the minister has been dealing with National Housing Corporation contracts and National Housing properties, leaving a, an entire board exposed um, because they've not been able to exercise the kind of discretion that is required of them as a matter of law. We understand that there is no financial stake that Mrs. Rice Bowen's son has in the insurance company that, that um, he works for. And therefore, it is arguable that there might not even have been a conflict of interest situation to begin with, uh, which might have merited uh, the public attention that it has. Um, we call on the Prime Minister and on the Minister to clear the air. The issue is not this rates point, the issue is not the insurance contracts of the NAC. The issue is the circumvention of the minister of the board by the Minister of Housing. And it is clear um, from the fact that the minister was completely silent in, in the debate that there's more important than the pencil. And Barbados at this time um, need to be made aware of what's happening. Interesting uh, about the view is that no one has, from the board has backed uh, Marlon Grace Moyne, uh, Abu Bandar, uh, 
former chairman, um, which is given um, by the last week's lesson, so it's for a symptom. How do you respond to that, that no one in the board has, has supported, from the board has supported Mario Rizmo? No one else has resigned. Did Mr. But, did, does Mr. Pandora still do engineering work for the National Housing Corporation? I think you should investigate that. Mm -hmm. And I think you should investigate the reason why Mr. Pandora was dismissed by Michael Lashley in the first place. Because the attempt to say that he should head a drainage unit is obviously a farce because 21 months later, Mr. Pandora has not taken up his position as the head of that drainage unit. I think your investigations will reveal the answers. I don't know anything. I don't but you're a member of the board of the Southern Regional Board. Because other members may have chosen not to speak at this stage. Not everybody likes to go out into the public, especially after what has happened to the former chairman when she stood up for what she believed and has now been the subject of allegations. I don't want, I'm going to have an open letter to people policy holders in the next week. I don't want to dilute this press conference today by dealing with it. But rest assured, people is as alive today as an issue as it was before. Um, there are grave concerns because the policy holders are not protected, the depositors are not protected. The oversight committee came to an end on the 12th of June. Indeed, there has been no application for judicial management. Um, the chairman of the oversight committee indicated to the country that there were only two options, winding up or judicial management. Neither of the two have happened. And I will be writing an open letter to people policy holders next week um, in the press because I believe that they now have to take responsibility for putting pressure on the government. Right now there is no oversight of any expenditure by people on the part of this government. And for the Minister of State in this press conference to say that there is a supervisor of insurance in place is to ignore the fact that there was a supervisor of insurance in place when the government put the oversight committee in place last year. And they found it necessary to do so to at least have oversight of the expenditure of people to prevent bonuses being paid, to prevent dividends being paid, to prevent unusual and extraordinary expenditure so that the tax, the depositors and indeed the policy holders are not disadvantaged as a result of it. Trust me, nothing is happening. And I could equally have added that in my wider concerns about the alarming state of drift that the country is now in.